Folks, Ford has unveiled the new Capri to some of the great and the good of the world's media. And let's have a look at some of the pictures of it and you can let me know what you think. Ford have said that their designers were very, very conscious of making this thing look like a Capri, um, especially its silhouette. It should look every bit like a Capri. And I think they've failed. I think it looks exactly like a Polestar 2 from the side. It's certainly very reminiscent of the Polestar 2 from the side. What do you think? I just don't think it looks like a Capri. The Capri was a sporty coupe, and this is an SUV crossover kind of thing. Um, I don't know why they'd use the name Capri with it and not make it look like one, or at least not have it as a sporty coupe. It's odd, I think. I know manufacturers are doing that a lot now, repurposing old nameplates on perhaps different styles of car. But for a car that's so iconic as the Capri, it would have been great to see that as a sporty coupe. Now, Honda's also reviving an old nameplate from the past, the Honda Prelude, which has got some great sort of history with British Touring Car Championship. And, you know, it was a really iconic car at the time. And luckily, with the new Honda Prelude, it is still a sporty coupe. They haven't decided to turn that into an SUV. Getting back to this Capri, it's going to start at £42,000. It's a full EV. It's going to have three different battery types. So it's got 52 kilowatt hour that produces 168 brake horsepower. Uh, there's a 77 kilowatt hour producing 282 brake horsepower and a 79 kilowatt hour battery producing 335 brake horsepower. And that one's going to also have the extended range. Now that base level standard range model uh, starts from £42,000. The extended range is a hair over £56,000. So it's not going to be cheap, this thing. Thing. Um, Ford's other big electric car at the moment is obviously uh, the Mustang Mach-E and that's a sort of sporty crossover coupe so do they need another one I'm not entirely convinced they've also obviously got the Explorer that joint venture with the Volkswagen group and this new Capri is using those same underpinnings that platform that they've developed in that joint venture with the Volkswagen group and that's also on things like VW ID5, the Skoda Enyaq, the Audi Q4, etc. We don't know the 0-62 on the base model at the moment. The mid-level one's going to be 6.3 seconds. The top one's going to be 5.4 seconds. So it's going to have a decent turn of pace about it. Now, if you go for the extended range model with rear-wheel drive, you'll be looking at 390 miles of range. If you go for all-wheel drive and the extra performance, you're looking at 348 miles of range. So, you know, it's not all terrible news. It could be a decent car um, by all accounts. And I've certainly looked forward to driving one. I just think it's a real shame that they've used that name. And I just don't get the references to how important they feel it was for it to look and feel like a Capri. Because because to me, it's about the most un-Capri-like vehicle I've seen today. There you go. Um, there will be lots of videos around. Um, I think electrifying.com has got one already. I'm sure what car will be all over this and all the other places you usually see the big channels uh, getting access to these cars early on. So go and check one of those out if you want to see more about this. Personally, I'll reserve judgment on the car and keep an open mind until I've got to drive it. It could be absolutely fantastic and it could feel like a Capri somehow. Um, but there we go. I just wanted to keep you up to date uh, on the news. Oh, it just looks like a pole star to me. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks ever so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.